Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. A couple of weeks ago I put a video up where I showed that you could do astrophotography with a very inexpensive refractor, um, this one here, the Orion Short Tube 80. And I said that we'd um, have a future video where I'd take a, a closer look at it. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, get on with that now. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with this video. The telescope is the Orion Short Tube 80 Achromatic Refractor Telescope. Um, it's available in the UK in a couple of different forms. One is just the bare optical tube assembly and that's £110 on Amazon at the moment. Um, the other option is closer to the one that I show here where there's some clamp rings, a finder scope, a star diagonal and one or two eyepieces and I think that's around 160 something pound in the UK at the moment. I can't find an option to have this mounted in the UK. Um, there is an equivalent telescope called the Skywatcher Star Travel 80, which is basically identical. And I noticed that that can be bought with a astronomical mount for a package price of just under 200 pound. So this telescope is very inexpensive and I kind of stumbled across it. Um, it's been around since the 1990s, so it's a very long lived model. Many astronomy enthusiasts and astrophotography enthusiasts may well have owned one of these or one of the Skywatcher equivalents um, because they provide a fantastic introduction to the hobby without costing too much. And I stumbled across it because I was trying to do astrophotography with a um, 127mm Mach telescope which had a very very long focal length which gives it very high magnification and this all kind of works against you as a, a beginner in astrophotography and I read a book which suggested using a short tube refractor telescope and it actually suggested this particular model so I went straight out and bought it and basically it um, kick-started my astrophotography hobby uh, because the results that came out of it were immediately gratifying. I use it occasionally for visual use. Um, when you buy it as a kit, the eyepiece that comes with it is sort of adequate um, but not, not super. And because I've been doing astronomy for a number of years before I got this telescope, I had some uh, better eyepieces and the views through this scope with a better eyepiece are um, really very, very good. For visual use, the scope is best suited to uh, brighter deep sky objects. So things like the Orion Nebula, the Pleiades, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, is perfectly visible through this. Perseus double cluster is, is another good target. M many of the star clusters can easily be picked up by this. Um, the nebula in the Milky Way, uh, so summertime targets for me here in the UK, like the Lagoon ne Nebula, um, are easily spottable in a scope like this. Very, very faint objects are not so easy to see because of the small aperture size. In those instances that's where I use my um, 127mm Mac scope. But nonetheless as a um, highly portable travel type scope for visual use um, this is superb. The scope can be fitted to a number of different mounts. Um, if this is your first telescope you may well not have a mount um, and the good news is that it's possible with the dovetail underneath to fit this to a standard photographic tripod. If I try this on my rickety little 
ultra lightweight tripod with lots of um, play in the joints and things uh, the views are a bit wobbly but it is doable but basically if you've got a half decent photographic tripod it's um, perfectly possible to use this for visual use to get yourself started and you know one of the things I must emphasize is although the bare tube is a hundred pound um, this isn't a toy telescope it's not a um, department store type telescope it is a genuine proper telescope that can give you good views moving on from the photographic tripod if like me you were um, already doing astronomy and uh, wanted a short tube refractor this can be fitted to um, Altaz mounts the underside dovetail is I think it's called a vixen style um, but it's the common one anyway that um, fits pretty well every mount um, so mine fitted straight into my next star mount without any problem my next star mount is a go-to computerized mount um, which makes it easy to find stuff basically it's also possible to fit this to an equatorial mount like the one that I commonly use in, in my back garden. Again, the, the, the fitting is the same. So it's quite versatile how you can use this, but if you were going away on holiday or something and just wanted a, a travel scope, then um, this along with a decent photographic tripod would get you actually quite good views of stuff if you could get into a, a dark sky environment, particularly enhanced if you had a, a decent quality eyepiece as well. When bought as a kit, you get the tube rings here, a red dot finder, um, but not the one that I show here. The, the one that comes with the kit is like one of those a little mini telescope, a sort of six by 25 or 30 something millimeter finder scope. I just prefer red dot finders, so that's what I fitted. Um, and the star diagonal and an eyepiece, like I say. The rings are essential to get the telescope to fit onto whatever mount you want to fit it to. So if you don't buy the kit, you'd need to source some rings. I prefer red dot finders over the visual ones. I just find them easier to use. The, you basically projecting a little red dot onto the night sky and everything uh, appears the right way up. Um, so I, I kind of switched out the little mini telescope which inverts the image and, and fitted this one. But it's, it's a kind of standard um, slide-in fitting. Focusing is achieved by a focusing knob uh, it's a single speed focuser, so unlike more expensive refractor telescopes with dual speed, you don't get a kind of very fine adjustment setting on the focuser. The focuser can be locked, however, um, so that once you've found your focus, it won't slip. And what I've done is the, I've marked the tube where I typically get an average focus because um, the tube has no markings on it again more expensive telescopes have have markings on them the star diagonal and the eyepiece like i say they're kind of nothing special um, but they can be upgraded uh, quite easily so as i say if you want to use this tube for visual astronomy then it makes a nice compact lightweight packable telescope for me though i bought this to give me the ability to dip my toe in the waters of, of astrophotography having not had much success with my 127 millimeter max scope and the reason this lends itself to astrophotography is the short focal length it's got an 80 millimeter aperture, which is plenty big enough for astrophotography. And it's got a short focal length of 400 millimeters. And what this means is that there's a, 
a very wide field of view that's given to you, which is extremely forgiving for uh, beginner astrophotographers. It's also good for visual astronomers because you fit a lot in to the field of view, so you can sort of find what you're looking for much more easily. Common wisdom for astrophotography is that you need to use an equatorial mount to get decent photographs, and indeed this is uh, largely true. However, I started off my astrophotography journey using a um, Celestron Nexstar SLT mount, which is a very lightweight Altaz mount, and using this telescope here I was able to get exposures of around 15 seconds, whereas maybe on an equatorial mount you're looking at a minute plus. Um, but nonetheless, this is again easily good enough to take images of things like the Orion Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy and such like. And in fact on my first night out with this, fitted with a, a DSLR camera in place of the um, star, star diagonal uh, and eyepiece, I took a photograph of the Orion Nebula and I also took a picture of the Flame and Horsehead Nebula which is in, also in Orion. And to be honest, I was absolutely astonished. I never thought that I would be able to get a picture of, a, of the Horsehead Nebula in particular using an Altaz mount and a very, very inexpensive telescope. I put those pictures in at the end of this video. Um, I haven't altered them in any way. They're as they were when I took them maybe three or uh, four years ago, probably, using the editing skills that I had then because um, I wanted to give you an idea of what you'd get as an absolute beginner using this type of telescope if you just stick a DSLR camera onto it. Nowadays my processing is a lot better and I would be able to generate considerably better images. Again, I'll put the picture that I put up a couple of weeks ago which was the Perseus double cluster and that was done using my kind of up-to-date editing skills if you like so I'll show you that also again at the end of this video if you haven't seen my original video. So what's the downside of this telescope then? On the plus side it's cheap, it's light, it gets you started, it's quite good as a visual telescope and it's got exactly the right focal length to be an astrophotography telescope. On the downside, the cheap design refractors are what are called achromatic refractors. And what this does is, it means that the uh, lenses in the telescope aren't able to bring the three components of light, red, green, and blue, into focus at exactly the same point. And this manifests itself both uh, visually and um, photographically into getting a little bit of purple fringing around the brighter stars or, or the edge of the moon. Now you can get around this in a couple of ways. One is you can get anti-fringing filters and the inch and a quarter one that would fit this telescope here I think costs about £60. I, I know that the two inch one um, costs something like a hundred pounds so they're quite expensive but they do largely eliminate the fringing however in uh, Photoshop it's possible to largely eliminate the fringing as well by using a, a function in the camera raw filter which is basically says something like remove blue purple fringes so that, that doesn't cost you anything if you've already got Photoshop. Visually, it's not such an issue really, but if you did find it irritating, then using the screw-in filter, which um, basically screws into the eyepiece, would help get rid of it. If you're a beginner, you probably won't really care about it. You'll be too busy being stunned by the quality of the images that you can see but as you develop more this become more of a of an irritation to you I think. Um, yeah so that's about it really for 
for this telescope other than for me to show you the images that you can get out of it like i say for the for the money 170 or pound or 69 for the package as shown here it's some um, unbelievable value for money the next step up really is to get a doublet refractor with specially treated and higher quality glass and maybe you're looking at um, 300 pound or 350 pound for that and the step up from that is to get a pure apochromatic refractor with more and glass again better treatments the device then gets heavier and it gets a lot more costly you're around the sort of five six hundred mark for that so if you're just interested in sticking your toe in um, to astrophotography then this is a good way of doing that without spending too much money of course if you're doing it for astrophotography you need you need to already have a tracking mount you can probably just about get away with putting this on a star adventure amount but um, I think it will be pushing the, the, the limits quite a lot. Um, it would be better if you had a, a normal telescope mount, even if it's just like my Celestron Next Star SLT mount. So yeah, I hope uh, anybody who's interested in this telescope, that this may have sparked their interest a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna put the pictures up that I took four years ago, as I say, unchanged from how they were edited four years ago so you'll see the purpley fringing and all that sort of thing and i'll put the double cluster picture that i took a, a few weeks ago up as well and at some point this year i think i'll try and stick this on my eq mount and get exposures of a minute or so um, in order to see what it can do when it's on a almost ideal telescope mount for astrophotography so uh, yeah on that note i shall bid you cheerio and see you next time take care